Hello, I'm Don Hayden, the chairman and CEO of Windmill Therapeutics, an oncology company founded on the belief that in cell therapy, cell source matters. And I'm pleased to provide this update on the progress that we're making in bringing the benefits of our products to patients with cancer. At Windmill, our mission is to translate novel insights in bone marrow immunology into life-saving cell therapies for cancer patients. And we see ourselves as developing the next generation of oncology cell therapies. Based on the exclusive position that we have in marrow infiltrating lymphocytes, or what we refer to as MILs. We've developed a proprietary scalable process to activate, transform, and expand bone marrow-derived T-cells into mills. And as we'll discuss in this presentation, we believe the natural qualities of mills suggest meaningful advantages over TILs and other T-cell therapies. And our position in mills is protected by very strong intellectual property with composition of matter, process, and use patents, and very deep know-how. Over the next 12 months at Windmill, we expect key data readouts with both our mills, non-gene-modified -gene mills, and CAR mills, or gene-modified mills, treatments. We'll talk about both in this discussion. Our phase two open-label trial and second and third line relapse non-small cell lung cancer in combination with Novolumab, a clinical trial we're running in collaboration with Bristol-Myers Squibb, and data readouts both in vitro and in vivo studies evaluating CAR mill versus traditional CAR T using both heme and solid tumor CAR constructs. And those studies are being done in collaboration with Dr. Carl June's group at Penn Center for Cellular Immunotherapies. And at Windmill, we plan to close a Series B extension by early fourth quarter to ena enable rapid achievement of these multiple milestones and successful execution of a crossover financing and IPO in 2021. This graphic illustrates in a very simple manner what we mean when we say in cell therapy, cell source matters. There are prim three primary sources of T cells used in adoptive T cell therapy. T cells from the peripheral blood, which generally lack broad antigen specificity. T cells from the tumor site, which tend to be a more exhausted T cell subtype and T cells sourced from the bone marrow, the cell source that is unique to mills and windmill. And these cells tend to be patient specific, broadly antigen specific, highly cytotoxic and highly persistent. And windmill is the only company that can activate, transform and expand this natural source of tumor specific memory T cells found in the bone marrow. As I mentioned at the outset, we have a proprietary manufacturing process through which we do that manufactured product, and it is patient-friendly, reliable, and scalable. As shown in this graphic, the process begins with the collection of 200 mLs of bone marrow from the iliac crest of patients with cancer in what is an outpatient procedure over 30 minutes done under conscious sedation. The T cells harvested from the bone marrow already have natural tumor antigen specificity. That bone marrow is then transported to our contract manufacturer, Cognate Bioservices in Memphis, where it undergoes a proprietary seven to 10 day manufacturing process, during which the cells in the bone marrow are activated, transformed, and expanded. And at the end of this process, they are both phenotypically and functionally different from the cells we started with. Our product is cryopreserved, release tested, and then transported back to the site where it's infused into patients, again, in a very simple procedure. And the time from the beginning to the end of this process is as little as 23 days. As I mentioned at the front of this slide, this process is very patient friendly. It is reliable. We've been successful in more than 90% of our manufacturing runs and it's scalable both in our work through clinical trials and into the market. This slide provides a very simple comparison of the multiple ways in which we see 
mills providing advantages as compared to other types of T-cell therapy, in this case, TILS. And if you look across the mills row from left to right, what you see is from a biological standpoint, mills have very high antigen specificity. They are of a memory phenotype. As I mentioned, from a T-cell collection perspective, the source of mills is the bone marrow. We have found um, tumor antigen-specific T-cells in 100% of the bone marrow that we've sampled. And from an ease of acquisition perspective, the outpatient procedure under conscious sedation is very patient-friendly. From a manufacturing standpoint, our manufacturing process with our Gen 3 process is 7 to 10 days. It only requires low-dose cytokines during manufacture. And our time from collection to dosing, as I mentioned before, is as little as 23 days. And from a clinical perspective, infusion of mills does not require cytokines uh, to be infused concurrently at any point during treatment. Mills are very persistent. We know they persist in patients out to seven years. Um, and that's as far as we've looked at this point. And in addition to being um, highly cytotoxic um, and durable, mills are also versatile, and as I'll talk about later, can be used as a source for CAR mill therapy. Our initial target for unmodified mills is solid tumors, and we believe there's a compelling preclinical profile to support our work there. Immune models suggest that a single antigen-specific encounter generates a population of memory T cells. And those memory T cells naturally home to and persist in the bone marrow. And in fact, we've found tumor-specific T cells in bone marrow in a variety of solid tumors, including non-small cell lung cancer, breast cancer, head and neck cancer, melanoma, and other solid tumors. And among these solid tumors, for a variety of reasons, our target of choice for our first clinical trial with MILS is non-small cell lung cancer. And this slide lays out the biological, clinical, and regulatory rationale for non-small cell lung cancer as our initial clinical target for unmodified MILS. From a biological standpoint, we know non-small cell lung cancer is highly immunologic. We also know that tumor-specific memory T cells have been consistently found in non-small cell lung cancer patient bone marrow. And through our own preclinical research, we know that MILS specifically recognize non-small cell lung cancer shared antigen. From a clinical perspective, we know there is very high unmet medical need and limited treatment options for patients after they've progressed on a PD-1 containing regimen. Given that, we believe that an open label study with objective response rate as a primary endpoint allows us to answer the efficacy question for MILS in patients with non-small cell lung cancer in as little as six to 12 months. Our dialogue with regulatory experts has told us that um, a 30% objective response rate in patients that have relapsed on or a refractory to PD-1 containing regimens would support discussion with regulatory authorities about an expanded registrational trial. And that point of view has been confirmed both clinically and regulatorily in our discussions with our scientific advisory board and a variety of key opinion leaders. We began our first clinical work in non-small cell lung cancer earlier this year. In a clinical trial of MILS plus nivolumab in phase two, in non-small cell lung cancer patients that are refractory to or relapsed on an anti-PD-1 containing regimen. The four, first portion of this trial was a safety cohort where we administered MILS only to patients with non-small cell lung cancer. And we saw no grade three or four toxicities. We saw, saw no dose limiting toxicities. And on the basis of this safety, our safety monitoring board approved opening the combination therapy of the study in the second quarter of this year. As I mentioned, we're enrolling patients that have definitively progressed on an anti-PD-1 containing regimen, and these are patients that have locally advanced and unresectable or metastatic non-small cell lung cancer. The design of the trial is it's an open-label single-arm multi-center study 
intended to enroll 20 patients in the combination portion of the trial. Patient's treatment begins with lymphodepletion, after which mills are administered on day one, and nivolumab is administered on day two and every four weeks thereafter. The primary endpoint of the study is objective response rate, but we're following these patients over a longer period of time for duration of response, progression-free survival, and overall survival. The study is designed in a very adaptive manner that allows for cohort expansion and rapid transition to a pivotal trial. And our timeline for this trial is shown in the orange bars at the bottom of this slide. We expect to have response data from our initial five combination patients by the latter part of this year, response data from 10 patients, and early duration of response and progression-free survival data by the second quarter of next year, supporting potentially a type C meeting with the FDA in the second half of next year. And assuming success from a clinical and regulatory perspective, we believe that data from this trial could support a BLA filing as early as the second half of 2023. Current status of the study is we have seven sites active. Three additional sites will become active in the fourth quarter of this year. We've already dosed two patients with Mills plus nivolumab in the combination portion of the study. We also have additional patients scheduled for bone marrow collection and dosing as we speak. And from a data perspective, we've uh, seen 12-week data on our first patient, and those data are very encouraging. As I mentioned earlier, we expect response data for, uh, from three to five patients by the middle of the fourth quarter, five patients or so by the end of the year. And our target is to have response data from all 20 patients by the middle of 2021. We're pleased with the progress in our non-small cell lung cancer study, and we're optimistic about what we will see from this trial in 2021. As I mentioned, not only are unmodified mills highly cytotoxic and durable, but they're also ver versatile. And we believe they may provide a superior cell source for CAR-T therapy. CAR-T therapy has clearly provided an advance in the treatment of cancer patients, yet the current therapies continue to have limitations. Limitations such as antigen escape variants, suboptimal trafficking, and lack of persistence. We believe the advantages of MILS as a cell source for gene-modified T-cell therapy have the potential to address these limitations. As it relates to antigen escape variants, we know that MILS retain their non-CAR-based tumor specificity through their native TCR. That native TCR remains functional both after transduction and CAR engagement. And CAR mills can recognize tumor even when the CAR's cognate antigen is lost. From a trafficking standpoint, we know that mills home to the tumor site via increased CXCR4 expression. The expression of SDF1 in the stroma of solid tumors acts as a beacon for mills, and we believe has the potential to improve the trafficking of CAR mills and solid tumors. And as I men mentioned earlier, we know that mills persist over the long term. They're detectable for up to seven years post-infusion. Uh, that was shown in a poster at ASH in 2016. And we also know that mills display superior efficacy over repeated challenges, something that was shown in an ASH poster just last year. And finally, at lower effective effector to target ratios, CAR mills are more effective than CAR T therapies derived from peripheral blood lymphocytes, what one might refer to as CAR PBLs. And this extensive preclinical data package caught the eye of Carl June and his team at the University of Pennsylvania and led to the signing of a collaboration agreement in early 2020. We believe in uh, Dr. June and his group we have a world-class partner to help rapidly advance our work with CAR mills. And this collaboration will directly compare specific CAR PBL versus CAR mill products using novel hematologic and solid tumor CARs. We believe this collaboration leverages PENS and windmills expertise, resources, and science, 
and under the collaboration, Windmill retains full control of all rights to our car mill platform. In the lower left-hand side of this slide, you see the timeline for upcoming data. In the first quarter of 2021, we expect to have preclinical in vitro data comparing car mill versus car PBL, again, with both heme and solid tumor con car constructs. In the third quarter of next year, we will have in vivo data comparing car mill versus car PBL. And we believe these data, this data package will support the initiation of a comparative car mill versus car PBL clinical trial in the second half of 2022. In total, this research will substantially expand and further validate the car mill preclinical data in advance of a comparative clinical trial. And finally, to turn to our financial future. To date, Windmill has raised $43.5 million in two venture rounds to support the execution of what we believe is a very effective and capital efficient plan. You see on the right hand side of this slide, the many milestones that have been accomplished with the $43.5 million that's been raised to date. Um, the $43.5 million provides cash runway through the end of January of next year. And as I mentioned at the outset, we're in the process of closing a Series B financing that will further extend our cash runway into the middle of 2022. The Series B extension funds, as shown on this slide, will fund numerous value-creating milestones for Windmill, building a strong foundation for a crossover financing and IPO in 2021. Above the bar on this slide is, are shown the milestones for our phase two non-small cell lung cancer study. As I mentioned earlier, response data on approximately five patients by the end of the year, transitioning to response data on 10 patients by the second quarter of next year and initial progression-free survival data. And then toward the end of the year, response data on all 20 patients and the opportunity uh, to engage the regulatory authorities on a, in a dialogue around future clinical work. Below the slide, you see a close on our Series B extension in the fourth quarter, and also the two milestone moments for our car mill collaboration with the University of Pennsylvania. The in vitro data in the first quarter, the in vivo data in the third quarter, and as I mentioned earlier, both of those supporting initiation of a clinical program in the second half of 2022. We believe this very robust and diverse data set will support a crossover financing followed by an IPO in the middle of 2021, assuming market conditions are supported. As I mentioned at the outset, we're very pleased with the progress that we're making at Windmill Therapeutics. We believe our products have the potential to provide substantial benefit to patients with cancer and we look forward to updating you as we move forward on our work to bring those patients, those benefits directly to cancer patients. Thank you for your time and attention, and we look forward to future updates.